today I'm only going to do some whole plate work although as you can see this camera has got the 4x5 back on it now today I'm filming with an old GoPro camera because I left my um, my iPhone camera tripod at home but that's actually good because what I like doing is now let's get this all started okay getting the camera levels quite an important task and last week last week I had a little spirit level on the top and it was horrible I don't normally use the spirit level normally I use the the measure app now I'm gonna crank that down like that and then all I have to do is and it's done and then you rotate it around and it's done that's how quick it was I don't know whether you remember last week well I cut about 30 seconds out of the video because it was really terrible that's how quick it is when you use the app for that okay now today I'm using a 180 millimeter lens which is the equivalent of about 32 millimeters in full frame okay let me get my let me get my blower brush out. I don't think you can see me when I'm around there, can you? Here we go. I just recently had had this shutter repaired um, I got the lens very cheap because it had dodgy shutter it's expensive getting shutters repaired is expensive it is well and truly worth spending the money to buy a lens and shutter that's already working well rather than try to buy a broken one and fix it up unless you can do it yourself but you can't because uh, parts aren't available. Okay, this has got a 4x5 back on it. Now, I've actually got two, I've got two whole plate backs today. This is a very old one. Nope, that's not it. This is a, this all looked different from the one I used last week. It is in my side. Okay. I'm a bit better organized than I was last week. I mean, I'm talking for one thing. Okay, and what I did was, I brought a, a wrap to put the back end of the camera like that. Okay, there's my, these are wooden plate holders. And they have film inserts inside them so that they can use film. This is from the very early days of film photography no from photography when glass plates was the norm so they are glass plate holders and it and the way that everything goes when when film oh, should I pretend to do that again forget it here we go ah uh, I made these myself covers here we go beauty put those in there next time I'll put those on the bottom okay so this the way these old holders work is you focus on the ground glass 
and you move the whole ground glass out of the way and then the holders fit into the slots here see the slots Doom. and then you take it out so it's different um, they wouldn't so so what happened was they were made for glass plates they were made for glass plates and when film came out they made metal adapters where you put the metal sheets into the holders in where the plates would have normally gone that's actually nice um, I've got the lens, I normally have the lens with Seiko written down the bottom there um, but the way it is here this is actually easy for me to use so I'm going to uh, and with a Ritrek board, right? It doesn't matter which way it goes. It doesn't have, have an up and down. You can rotate it around any way you want. Anyway, I'm getting very distracted. I need my cable release. Good. Hey, see that? It's pretty cool, huh? Okay. Watching. You cock the shutter. This is a Seiko shutter. Copal shutter is a bit different. All right. You cock the shutter. You open the lens and you make sure that the aperture is open. Can you see that? I hope you can. Cool. We're now ready to view. Yeah. That cross out. Did I just check and make sure I tighten these? No, I didn't tighten these. There we go. Okay, so let's adjust this. What am I interested in the photo? Okay, I'm going to stop talking about all this. What am I interested in the photo? I'm interested in the photo in the curve. These curves here. I'm definitely not interested in the foreground. So. Cha -cha -cha. I'm using my 180 lens. Fujinon 180. Cheat shoot and my Fujin on 180 has 25 millimeters of Ryzen 4. It's actually got a little bit more than that, but that's all I calculate. So here we are, here we go. That's nothing, zero. 25 is there. Still a bit ordinary, isn't it? Let's see if I can get a bit more. Okay, let's do a bit of focusing. Oh, that's okay for me because I'm only doing a um, a test. Okay. Everything's a long way away, so I'm just going to focus on everything a long way away. And I'll give you a look. So I I focused on that. Is it a tree? I focused on that tree there. Yep. Okay, same thing as last week, let's get our light meter out. Now, first thing you always do is you check your film speed. I'm using GP3 100, check the meters on 100. Please do that or else it's all wrong. 
Then I, I'm using the incident meeting, meter reading down. See that? The reflected incident. You, you stand at the subject. 16 and it's about the same as uh, last week. It's interesting, isn't it? Now with these meters, you hold it a few moments. 16 and two thirds, that's almost where it was last week. And we are, guess what? One eighth of a, uh, let's see. Sixteen and two thirds. Now, I'm then dialing sixteen and two thirds into there, and it says I'm quarter of a second F twenty two thirty two. So I'm going to use halfway between F twenty two and thirty two. Can you see that? When you adjust your sh uh, the speed on shutters, adjust it while it isn't cocked. Don't adjust it after you've cocked it, because you can damage some mechanisms in the shutter. Okay, I've now closed my lens. I'm now cocking it and I'm doing a test firing. Okay, where are we? F2232? Yep. Okay, let's go and expose some film. Now I'm going to take which is it? I'm only going to shoot one on this side. I'm going to shoot the smallest number first. Now let's watch how this goes. We open the back like that. I don't like the way it sits on there there we go the way these click in is see how there's uh, uh, tongue and groove I guess and that's cut out that fits in there at the top and you slide it into the position there notice the felt here that's an important part of the light trap and that could be where the lights leaking in as well so we'll have to see now, make sure you open this side of the dark slide, not the other one, otherwise you ruin your film. Okay, that slides on that. These dark slides don't come out fully. So let me move this out of the way in case it's in the picture. Okay. Done. And it goes in. Okay. Now, if you'd wondered why I carry masking tape in my bag, it's for exactly this reason. And that is, you've got no way of knowing with these older film holders which you've exposed and which you haven't right no way of knowing so what you've got to do is you've got to mark it cool so that's been taken now, i'm going to write on that tape large format is all about workflow and if you get the workflow wrong it doesn't work that was one quarter f22 32. Cool. Now, now, see how I'm leaving these exposed in the sun? That's because I want to know whether they're leaking. I'm not being particularly careful with them. Now, I'm going to get another one which hasn't been fixed, so I'm going to take the same picture. This is side number one. Ah, it's the wrong one. I'll load up the wrong one. There we go. Okay, so 27. I'll explain what that other one is in a moment. Now, 
Yep. Quarter of a second. 22.32. Dark slide out. Picture taken. Sorry about that. Okay, we are good to go. This is masking tape so it doesn't uh, damage anything. Now, when I get home, when I go to process these, uh, I've got a little hole punch. When I take these out of the holder, I will put an extra notch in the side of the fixed ones so that I know when they are um, when they are done. Now let me let me show you what's happened here. There is no standard for wooden film holders. So what happened was every camera manufacturer made their own back to their own dimensions and then made film holders to work with their back of their own dimensions the idea being that if you bought a particular camera you had to buy their film backs um, which isn't which isn't a new thing it's like when you buy a particular printer you have to buy their ink uh, in their cartridges and they charge a premium for it um, so you'll notice that these two holders I want you to look at the width here. This one's a little bit shorter, narrower than this one by a couple of centimeters. See that? Uh, I bought these in the same job lot from a seller and the person didn't know. And these didn't fit. Do you see that gap there? It doesn't fit in the film holder. But there was a trick that happened. When the, uh, when the transition from wooden film holders this style uh, was made to the spring backs. They designed the spring backs so if you planed off these tongue and grooves, you could use them in your new fancy spring back film holder. And I discovered that I've got a spring back film holder. If I planed these off, it'd work in that. So that's why that's been planed off and it's smaller. So. The film holder that I used last week is a springback one. And I actually brought that with me as well. So let's put that on and then I can I can take a picture with this one. That's what's in here. These are the other film holders. You saw this last week. Oh I meant to say last week. You'll notice that they're red on one side. Um, the Japanese market likes having one side of their dark slide, the metal dark slide, red. So if you see film holders made for the Japanese market, one side of them's red. Isn't that cool? Okay, now. Open this up. It was, it was cool when I left home today and now it's all, now I'm all hot and sweaty. Okay, very similar. I need to, need to refocus because the distance from the back is almost certainly different. Which is the reason I opened up the lens. you look at that.
Like that. Cool. I don't know whether I don't know whether you you saw that video that I made last week. But did you notice how bad the whole place the whole 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 plate picture was? I mean the composition it was nerve, it was only ever gonna be myrrh anyway. But um, it turned out really bad. I, I, the, it, it had like horrible processing marks on it. It looked really gritty. Here's the thing. I was reading on the interwebs a little while ago. Ah, oh, now here we go with this other film holder that's been cut. This will fit into this back here, like that. Pretty cool, hey? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna one quarter, 22 and a half. I'm not even, going to even bother going to take a light meter reading here because it hasn't changed at all. Now you'll notice that this doesn't have a locking tab on it, so you've got to be careful when you slide it out. Here we go. I'll get the people, see the people in the box? I'll get the people in the box in. Now that was a quarter of a second, so they'll be a bit blurry, but hey, who cares? Um, That'll do. Cool, great. Now. While I've got that back on, I'll take a picture with one of my known good film. Ah, oh, no, no, I just stuffed, nearly stuffed it up, didn't I? I need to mark this holder as being taken. I, I hope I did number one. There we go. That's that's how easy it is to stuff this this business up, everybody. That was one quarter. Thirty-two. There we go. Now my um, I'm I'm not going to take another picture with this. My um. I might make a video of uh, the processing. My um, my processing reel for whole plate can take three sheets at a time, um, which means I'm I'm going to take six sheets here. So I've got two lots of film processing batches which means I'm going to be spending a couple of hours processing film tonight I want to do it tonight because I've got stuff I've got to do tomorrow okay so that can go in there there we go so that's my whole plan yeah, these whole plates, those, these whole plate adapters are quite cheap buying from Japan because very few people use whole plate. I mean, there's a reason why and it costs films really hard to get. Well, it's not hard to get, there isn't much film available would be a better way of putting it. The only film I can find in it is Shanghai GP3, um, which is reasonably cheap. The alternative is, ooh, uh, have a look at this. This this might not work out for me. See how that the bellows? See how my bellows has gone funny here? That may caught. See that? That may cause vignetting in my final image if I'm not lucky. Okay, so hold that thought. So, just because your lens has the movement that you want, I mean, I added 50 mils of movement, I only said I had 25, so it's gonna vignette anyway. Just because you got the movement on your lens, doesn't mean you're not gonna have problems with bellows. And that's why, if you're doing this for 
it's for money you you'd have something like a monorail camera and you put a bag bellows on it for a sh relatively short focal length like this and that doesn't have bellows that's just a like a balloon and you you can move it anywhere you want okay now I have another lens not moving the camera anywhere else just just do that okay here's my caps that's the This is a 300 millimeter f 5.6 lens. That 180 was a number was a copal number one, or was it a number one shadow, or second number one. This is a copal number three, and you can see it is a big shutter. I mean, it's a big lens as well. Look at all that glass. So once you start getting over 250. You start getting into copal three shutters, everything starts getting weak. Did I take the bike? I didn't think I took the back one off. There we go. That would have been dark, wouldn't it? I would have noticed eventually. This particular lens This particular lens is mounted in a Linhof shutter board, Not Linhof sh shutter Is mounted on a Linhof technical board It's made by Toya View but don't worry about that And this is a Linhof 2 Ritrek adapter and the reason for that is, is that that 300mm lens is a very useful focal length for 8x10 and my 8x10 camera uses, uh, well I have a Linhof Technica adapter board for Toyo. So it is a, it's a good intermediate. Now 300mm is long, I'm going to have to do that. I want to put my oldie ye oldie back on again Oop, sorry about that everybody okay I'm just gonna uh, do a cut while I check whether the other camera's filming and it's still working. I'm not sure about this one. Cool. I might have to cut that out. Anyway, here we go. Okay. Can you see that? Needs a lot of extension, huh? So, let's have a look. So this lens, I have it right on the extension here and I have it extended out quite a bit there so now this is a long lens don't call it a telephoto lens because it's not a telephoto lens telephoto lens is a design that shortens the amount of extension you need now see what I'm doing here now what do I want? I might go for that, what do you reckon? Yeah, that'll do. I want to get some blue sky in, because blue sky is really hard to get right with um, processing. It shows your processing. Now. Now to do a focus. I'm just focusing on the uh, the building itself. Great, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, might be me. Shit. 
cheer and cheer and like. Choo choo. Now, that 300 millimeter lens has got 82 millimeters worth of rise on it. Six by eight. I've got just under 60, 65. I added this 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 little ruler here, you can see why. So I'm well within the image circle. So if I've got any vignetting. <coughs> quarter second F22 and a half. <coughs> You'll notice that this lens is marked in th third stops where that Seiko, not lens shutter, where that Seiko shutter was marked in half, half stops. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter at all. Whatever. A sixth of a stop difference isn't going to make any, I mean, sixth of a stop difference is basically you yeah, fire the shutter twice, you're probably going to get more than that variant anyway. Okay, so I've got that. Cock the shutter. Beauty. I'm going to get my fixed one. I'm going to make an exposure with this. Didn't cut the shutter, did I? Just move the aperture. There we go. Okay. Mark that. See. There's my pencil. That's why I have more than one pencil. More than one at writing implement. One quarter. F22, 32. And this was with the 300. Okay, everything's getting hot. Everything's starting to get very warm, everybody. Okay. I'm going to do one of them with my unfixed one. Now, that's the side I've got to take. So that's the side that's got to go into the camera. There's some people about to walk in there. See what happens. Ready, spaghetti, go. Ha ha ha. Okay. Ah, I was saying earlier, but I forgot to finish the story. When I did the three different film formats last week, 4x5, 5x7, and whole plate, I was using three different batches of film. I know, because when you look at the, the film box, it's, it has the batch number written on it. Now, normally when you... Normally when you're using stuff like 35 millimeter, you don't worry about, I mean, film batches, because you know, you don't need to worry about that. Um, you do sort of tend to think about that stuff when you're doing large format. Uh, if you're doing anything challenging. Anyway, the, um, what was different was, black and white films have a lot of dyes in them, sensitizing dyes 
that help the film become more sensitive to different colored lights, uh, to different color light. If they didn't have those dyes, then we'd only have blue sensitive film. Um, when you when you develop your film or you pre-wash your film, a lot of those dyes come out with the developer. So you end up with colored de developer water, which isn't the problem because you normally throw it away if you're, if you're doing that one shot. Uh, I've done that. I've done that. So I'm gonna put the other, uh, other back on. I can pack that up. back on and anyway uh, the um, the first two well let me phrase it the other way the last one which was the um, the whole 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 plate had very very different colored water coming out than the others it was very purple which is how Shanghai's always been. So a better way of saying it would be, I've noticed that more recent batches have had different dyes in, which tends to suggest it's a different film or that the formula's been changed. Anyway, cut long so short, I was reading some, ah, my pencil. I was reading uh, some internet-y stuff where somebody, that, said that uh, they believe that Shanghai is no longer getting Orwo, a European filmmaker, to do a lot of their, their work for them, and they have changed the, um, the formula. Um, one thing to note about this box of uh, whole plate is that the sheets are really badly cut. They're, they don't fit in the holders very well. There's ragged edges. Newer ones don't have that problem. So Orwell's probably doing the finishing. When they talk about finishing, that's where they get the film. You've got, I don't know what they might, they might have two or three meter wide sheets of film that they coat with their coating machines. Which, which then gets slit into rolls, into widths, which may then be perforated for 35 millifilm, mil film. It then may go through machines that then puts the edge markings on them with light. And they then have to be loaded into the rolls and the holders and stuff like that. In other words, the finishing part, all in the dark. So the finishing part's actually, actually quite an important part of the, the process. And even if you've got really good film, you can still drop the ball at the end. So apparently they're using Orwo for that um, which I mean don't think that's unusual let's make this happen <laughs> 